After the close of the Sangam epoch from AD 300 to AD 600, there is an almost total lack of information regarding occurrences in the Tamil land. Sometime about AD 300 or a little later, the whole country was upset by the predatory activities of the Kalabra. This is what the great historian K. A. Nilakanth Shastri wrote in his famous book, A History of South India. In fact, it was he who introduced this whole idea that the Sangam age, which saw the emergence of three great dynasties, the Cheras, the Cholas and the Pandyas, was followed by a dark age. And this dark age was introduced by the rulers who belonged to the Calabra clan. Although it was Nilakanth Shastri who had introduced this idea, but we find that later many scholars started to build on this theory. And one of the most influential book about this topic is by M. Arunachalam. In this book, the author argues that the Kalabras were a predatory tribe who came from the region around Shravan Belgol. M. Arunachalam identifies the Kalabras as non-Tamils, who used Prakrit Kannad and they launched a successful three-pronged attack on the entire Tamil region on Madurai, on Puhar and on Kachi. If you look at the works of other scholars about the Kalabras, there are some who have argued that the Kalabras were anti-Brahmanical and they followed Jainism or Buddhism. There are even those scholars who have looked up at the rise of the Kalabras through economic lenses. So in this particular type of theory, these scholars have argued that the Kalabras and their rise represented the resistance of a non-peasant population against the ever-expanding peasant society. So in this whole theory, the rise of the Calabras was a and the fall of the three great kingdoms of ancient Tamilkam can be seen as a resistance of the non-peasants against peasants. So you can see that these are some of the theories which scholars have put forward about the Calabras. But for us, the main question is which of these theories are correct? or can we make this judgment at all? When we look at the evidence about the Calabras, we basically have two types of evidence. First are the textual evidence or sources and the second are epigraphical or inscriptional sources. When we look at the textual sources, we have basically two sources. First is a Buddhist text called Vinaya Vinichaya by someone called Buddhadat. And in this particular text, we are told, and I quote, While the imperishable Achyut Vikranta, having raised the Calabra family, was ruling the earth, it was begun and was finished. So based on this line, we can say that the text, this particular Buddhist text, was composed during the reign of a Calabra king named Achyut Vikranta. Now, unfortunately, we do not know the exact date when this particular Calabra king reigned or the date of the composition of the Buddhist text. Although there are some scholars who have argued that the author of this Buddhist text, Buddhadat, lived in the period of 6th century AD. If this uh, speculation is correct, then we can assume that uh, Achyut Vikranta possibly reigned in 6th century AD as well. Now, coming to the second textual source, we have a work on Tamil grammar, but this is not exactly a contemporary source because this particular Tamil grammar was composed around 11th century AD. And this Tamil grammar was authored by a Jain. And in this particular work, we are told, and I quote, We will praise our king, the unique one who has the courage of killing, he of sounding anklets, who has a shining beautiful chest, with round ornaments, with the fish combined with the bow and the striped tiger. These lines are for a king named Achyutan. Now you must be wondering how can historians use this uh, text of Tamil grammar or this particular passage when there is no mention of any Calabra. 
To understand this, we have to look at some of the speculations which historians have made. Now, if you remember the name of the king who is mentioned in the Buddhist text, you will know that he is called Achyut Vikranta. And in this uh, Tamil uh, grammar text, we have the name Achyutan. What scholars do is that they argue that this Achyut Vikranta of the Buddhist text and Achyutan of this Tamil grammar are the same person. These scholars also point out that in this passage of the Tamil grammar, Achyutan is described as wearing an ornament that had the symbol of bow, fish and tiger. Now, if you have watched our video on the Sangam age, you will know that these three symbols were the symbols of the three great dynasties of ancient Tamilakam. The bow was the symbol of the Cheras, the fish was the symbol of the Pandyas, and the tiger was the symbol of the Cholas. So these scholars argue that the fact that Achyutan was wearing this ornament on his chest that had these three symbols means that or symbolizes the defeat of these three great dynasties by the Calabras. So as you have seen, this is the speculation which scholars have used to build their theories about the Calabras. Now we have to look at the second type of evidence that is the epigraphical or inscriptional evidence. When we look at the inscriptional evidence about the Calabras, we find that the Calabras are mentioned in some of the inscriptions of the Chalukyas, the Pandyas and the Pallavas. For example, if we look at the inscription of a Chalukya king named Vinayaditya Satyashray, who ruled at the end of 7th century AD, he tells us that he subjugated many powers. And one of these powers is Kalambra, not Kalabra. And a similar type of phrase appears in the inscription of another Chalukya king named Kirtivarman. Here he tells us that he had defeated the Cheras, the Cholas, the Pandyas and the Kalabras. So you can see that the same type of phrases has been used whether we are talking about in the inscription of Vinayadit Satyashray or in the inscription of Kirti Varman. If we look at the inscription of the Pallava king Narsimha Varman first, we see that a similar type of phrase has been used where Kirti Var where Narsimha Varman tells us that he had defeated many powers. And of these many powers, one is Calabra. Now this repeated appearance of the Calabras have led to two different conclusions. Those scholars who support the whole dark age theory and the fact that the Calabras ruled over the entire Tamilkam region, they argue that this reappearance of the Calabras in the different inscriptions of different dynasties means that Calabras had hold over the entire Tamilkam region for at least three centuries. Then there are those scholars who argue that if you look at how the Calabra name appears in these inscriptions, they argue that uh, the Calabras are mentioned as one of the many enemies of a particular king. So if you look at the inscription of Kirti Varman, the Chalukya king, here Calabras are mentioned alongside the Pandyas, Cheras and the Cholas, which means that Calabras, if they were a power, they were a minor power. But the Calabra story does not end here because we have a inscription, a copper plate grant to be precise, where we find a detailed account of the Calabras. And it is this inscription which has been used as a source for most of the theories that we read about the Calabras. This inscription is the famous Vilvikudi copper plate grants that was commissioned by a Pandya king in 8th century AD. The grant at the beginning mentions the village named Velvikudi, which was given to Brahmins by a Pandya king. But then we are told that someone called Calabra, who is described as a Kali king, 
conquered the Pandya country. The Kalabra also cancelled the grant of this village that was given to the Brahmins. Later, the copper plate grant goes on to tell us that the Kalabras were defeated by the Pandyas and a Pandya king restored this village grant to the Brahmins. The conquest of the entire Pandya country and the cancellation of the grants given to the Brahmins by the Kalabras was seen as a proof that the Kalabras had conquered the entire Tamil region and they were anti-Brahmanical. Here, the facts from the Jain text, not Jain text, but a Tamil grammar text written by a Jain writer and the Buddhist text where the Kalabra king is mentioned has been used to argue that the Kalabras followed non-Brahmanical tradition. But as I said earlier, there are other scholars who argue that the evidence related to the Kalabras are not as substantive as we would like it to be. In fact, K. Nilakanta Shastri, who had introduced this whole theory for the first time, he too accepts that we do not know enough about this period. Even in Velvekudi Copper Plate Grant, historians have argued that the emergence or the mention of the Kalabras and their final defeat by the Pandya king can be seen as a use of trope that has been employed by different dynasties in early medieval India. So in that sense, we do not have the kind of evidence about the Kalabras to make these theories of Dark Age. Now, I would like to know what are your opinions about the Kalabras. So feel free to write it in the comments. If you like this video, do subscribe. Thank you for watching.